Okay, hi everybody and welcome to the next in this series of screencasts on programming for psychology and vision science. So in this screencast we're going to be looking at how we can deal with errors. So what our objectives are, we want to be able to um, interpret the error messages that, that Python gives us. So if we make a mistake in our programming, um, Python's going to give us some information in its um, error message that we can use to give us a sense of where we went wrong in our, in our code. So we're going to also look at some of the common types of error that we can make and, and how they arise and um, hopefully this gives us some insight into how we can go about fix fixing them. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you know how to get um, Spider up and running. So we're just going to switch straight over to Spider over here to um, run Python code. So as you are, are developing your, your code, it's, it's really inevitable that you're going to make errors. So programming language, languages are, are very unforgiving. So even what seem to be very minor things are actually can be actually quite fatal to the program because Python just doesn't know how to interpret what you actually mean. All it has to go on is your, is your code and if that doesn't fit the format that's expected you'll tend to get um, an error which would be um, good in this situation because you don't want Python doing something that you didn't expect it to do. So it'll give you an error and one of the, the skills in programming is to be able to interpret these error messages so you can see where the um, mistake has been made and you can easily go in there and, and fix it. So what we're going to be doing in this uh, screencast is just going over some of the, the common error types you can make in Python and, and seeing how uh, Python communicates those er errors to us. So one thing I want to point out before we begin is that just in terms of what I'm calling an error in this lesson, um, this is uh, an error in the way that we've created our Python program in terms of the uh, code that we've, we've written in. So this doesn't include a, a particular class of errors called uh, logic errors. So these are errors where, um, as far as Python con is concerned, the program is fine, so there's no problems at all with, with the code, but the code logically doesn't do what you want it to do. So those are a different class of error. We're not really going to be, to be looking into those because they're, they're much harder to debug and they can be very, very insidious problems. So here we're going to focus on the, on the type of errors that, that we make that, that cause Python to complain about what we're trying to do. Okay, so let's start by looking at one type of error we might make, which is when we try and access a variable that we haven't actually created yet. So we've got a new, new blank file here, so we haven't done anything. So if we try and uh, print the contents of the variable apples. So we haven't defined apples yet. So if we save and execute this, you'll see that we get an error from Python here. So you can see in, in red here the, the error message. So we can get three important um, things out of these error messages. So first, you can see that it's telling us the line number. So it's saying the problem seems to be around this line number two. So then if we look at our code, we can see the line number, look at the corresponding code to see where the, the problem lies. So this not, line number is not always exact. It can usually be, you know, a plus or minus a couple of lines, but it, it, it lets us narrow down where, where the problem seems to be happening. So the second bit of information it gives us is the type of error. So Python has a bunch of different classes of error, and this is telling us here that this in particular is what Python considers to be a name error. So as we go through the lesson, we're going to look at a whole bunch of these different classes of error. And, and knowing that it's a particular class really narrows down the kind of error that we've made. Okay, so the final pieces of information is this, this extra information that's printed over here. So Python is usually pretty clever about picking up what the problem is. So here it's, it's telling us this name, apples, is not defined. So this is our, is our problem. We haven't uh, defined what apples is, and yet we're trying to print its contents to the screen. 
So Python very, very correctly comes back and says, well, well, hang on, you haven't told me what apples is yet, so I can't complete this operation. Okay, so this is a, a name error. So we can have a look at a, a few other different types of name errors. So here it was pretty obvious, but what about if we did something like apples equals two, and we want to print apples. Save that, and we run it. Okay, we've got an error again. What's happened here? So you can see that now we've made a, we've made a typo. So rather than apples with, with two Ps, we've got apples with, with three Ps. So this is another one of those cases where it might look like these, these two bits of code are very close, but to Python, this is just, they're not, not close at all. So we can, of course, fix that by getting rid of that extra P and the code runs fine. Okay, so you might also come across a name error if you're trying to uh, create a string, for example, and you forget to include the quotes. So something like this. So we're trying to define this hello string to be hello, and we save it and run it. We're getting an error because this where we don't have hello in quotes here, so we're assuming it's a variable, but we haven't defined it yet, so it, it doesn't doesn't run. So of course the way to fix this would be to actually add the quotes in there. And if we run that, it will um, execute fine. Okay, another form of name error would be if you uh, try and use some functionality without um, using the import statement to add it in beforehand. So we've seen in the past that we have this random package that we can use to generate random numbers. So, for example, if we try and use that here, generate a random number, we run it. We're going to get a name error because Python at the moment doesn't know anything about this name random. We haven't defined it, so it doesn't know what to do. Of course, the remedy here is to import this random package beforehand and then it executes correctly. Just one final point on these name errors is that, as you know, the, the Python code executes sequentially. So it's not sufficient to have the import after the um, command that's using it. So if we try and run this, you'll still get a name error because even though you have the import statement in there, it's occurring after you've, you've tried to use it. So it's not available for this particular command on line two, and that's giving us the error. Okay, so those were name errors. So we're going to move on to a different class of error now, and this is called a, a syntax error. So we get this class of error when Python really can't parse a section of the code. That is, it's, it's not written in a format that it can understand. So as a starting example, if you remember when we started talking about variables, we encountered this idea that there are some restrictions on the name of every variable. Uh, in particular, you can't start them with a number. So let's just see what happens if we try and do that. So four apples equals four. Okay, let's see what happens when we try and run this. You can see that Python's telling us that there's a syntax error here. This, um, this line is invalid in that Python doesn't know how to interpret it because we've broken this rule that the variables can't, that can't start with a number. Okay, so we can also get a syntax error if we try and use an operator that Python doesn't know anything about, perhaps in a, in a particular context. So if we want to print two dollar sign three, uh, what does the dollar sign mean in this context? Um, I don't know, Python doesn't know. So when we try and run it, we get a syntax error. It's gonna tell us it's invalid because it doesn't know what this dollar sign means here. All right, another situation where you might get a syntax error is if you forget to add the colon in a, in a loop or in a conditional. So say if you've something got something like if two is greater than one, then print A, this is a standard if statement. Now if we try and run it, we're gonna get a complaint about our syntax. So what's wrong with our syntax here? We've forgotten this colon at the end of the if statement. Now if we save it and run it again, it runs fine. Okay, so the next class of error we're going to look at is called an indentation error. 
So as you know, Python's very picky about indentation. So it actually needs to be because indentation is the way that Python uses to indicate program structure. So it needs to be used consistently throughout your code so that Python knows, knows what's happening. So what we do is to use uh, four space characters, which we get by pressing the tab key to indicate indentation. So you'll find that if, if you don't use this indentation correctly, you'll get an indentation error. So let's try here with a, with a typical for loop for i in range 2. Now if we press enter here, you'll see the spider's clever enough to automatically indent us, but here we're going to try and generate an indentation error, so we'll press backspace to go to the start of the line, and now we'll just print i. Alright, so if we save and run this, you'll see that we've, we've got an indentation error. And Python's also telling us what it, what, how this came about. So it's saying, well, I expected an indented block to be here because you've said I want to do this for statement, I've finished it with a colon, and yet the um, activity is not indented underneath this statement here. So, of course, the way to fix it would be to simply reinstate the missing indentation and it runs, runs fine. Okay, so here's a, a slightly different example. So, say if we've got a nested loop. So, we've got two loops nested inside each other. Now, if we type something here, this will be nested under both loops. If we type something here, it'll be nested under the first loop. What about if we type something here? So you can see that we've changed the indentation structure here. We're not right at the start, we're not four characters in, we're not eight characters in, we're six characters in. So this might cause problems for um, Python because it doesn't know, well, is this supposed to be under the second four or the first four? So if we save it and run it, it's going to tell us an indentation error because it doesn't um, match a, an indentation level that Python would expect. So of course the way to fix this would be either to push it back underneath the first one or underneath the second one, whatever would be appropriate. And if we save it and run it, um, we can see the results. All right, so the next class of error we're going to look at is called a type error. So we get this error if there's, there's something wrong with the data type that we're using for a particular operation or a function. So we've come across this before when we try and uh, combine some data types that Python doesn't really know what to do with. So for example, if we try and divide a string by a number, what does that mean to divide a string by a number? Well, I don't really know, and Python doesn't know either, so it's giving us this type error, because it doesn't have, it's unsupported this operation use to use a string and an integer in combination. It just doesn't know what to do with, so it gives us this uh, type error. So we can also get a type error if we give a function more arguments than it's expecting. So for example, this uh, function abs returns the absolute value of a numerical argument. So we could do print abs of minus three. If we run that, it'll give us three. So this abs, func abs function only takes the one argument. So if we try to give it minus five as well, what we'll find is that we get a type error. And Python's telling us what the problem is. This abs function only takes exactly one argument, but we've given two. On the flip side, we could try running abs without any arguments at all. And you can see that Python's going to complain again because it takes one argument and we've given it zero this time. Okay, so that's type errors. Another class of error is uh, called an index error. So we encounter an index error if we try and access an element of a collection beyond the number of elements that the collection contains. So for example, say if we have a, a list from zero to five and we're trying to print the tenth index. What will happen? It's giving us an index error because it's saying the list index is out of range. 
So what that means is that, well, we've, we've defined apples as only having five items, yet we're trying to access this index 10. So obviously we don't have this um, sufficient number of items for this, so it gives us an index error. So as you know, uh, strings are quite similar to lists in lots of ways, and in this um, situation, it's also the same thing. If we try and access a character of a string beyond which um, the string contains, we also get an index error. All right, so the last type of error we're going to consider today is an attribute error. So we get this class of error if we're trying to use a function or a variable that's attached to data, so this is also known as an attribute, that's not actually present. So we've seen that the strings have a whole set of attached functions. So imagine that we thought that one of these functions was called sum. So we think that we could do hello string dot sum, and that would be sensible. If we save this and run it, however, Python's going to give us an attribute error because a string object doesn't actually have an attribute called sum. So we don't actually have this functionality available in this data type, so we get this attribute error. Okay, so that's a quick um, summary of the, the different types of classes of errors that Python can produce and, and how, how we can go about interpreting the error messages and fixing the problems that we've, we've uh, made. Okay, thanks, and I'll see you in the next screencast.